with the Combine looming next week. No better time than to check in with, uh, well, the All-American, Roma Dunze. How you doing this morning, Rome? I'm doing well. Doing well. Thanks for having me. Man, thank you. Thank you for jumping aboard with us. I know you've got, you, what, you got speed training in 30 minutes? Is that right? we got speed training in 30 minutes? I do, yep. So uh, tell us, I know you're down there. Roger told us uh, a lot of what's going on with his training down in Southern California. I'm guessing with the combine looming next week, uh, you down in Southern California as well and, and getting all rehearsed and trained up and ready to go for next week? I am, I am. Yeah, me and Roger are actually um, working in, in the same facility doing doing kind of the, the same things. You know, he, he's a different body type than me, so a little alteration. But, yep, down here in Southern Cal doing, doing the same thing as him. What do you mean, different body type? How so? I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm expected to run a little faster. He's definitely much stronger, so um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> hey, uh, Goldie, why don't you tell Rome the story you told me just off the air? Yeah, Rome. I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to tell you how to get better, but I'm. I'm here to help if I can. Uh, when I was a pro, pro, I think prolific's a fair way to describe it. High school quarterback. I uh, purchased a VHS. It was like thirty or forty bucks. Had like the hard the hard case for the VHS. You know what I'm talking about? It was a yeah, Don, I mean, Don, it was Don Beebe's speed enhancement video, and it was all about running a faster forty. And I'll I'll tell you, Rome. I some numbers you never forget. I clocked a four six three at football camp that year. What? So I mean, would what? you turn some heads? Yeah. Um. You know, you could probably find it in the dark web someplace. <laughs> so. Don Beebe's, huh? Yeah, like fastest white guy in the NFL of all time. <laughs> Like Christian McCaffrey yeah. doesn't even know how fast this guy is. Rome, you probably weren't born. Do you even know who Don Beebe was? I have no clue who that is. <laughs> yeah, he played. Yeah. <laughs> you don't feel old, Aaron. Don't worry about it. He played for the Bills. He played for the Bills. I think was in all four Super Bowls with the Bills. An amazing receiver, great special teamer. Oh, yes. Okay. So if Goldie ran four six three yeah. back in the day, big time. Do we have any idea? Well, first and foremost, are you running an Indy next week? Do you know yet? I do plan on running. Yes, I do. You do plan on running. Do you have, I know you were a 10, 800 meter guy. Do you have a sense with all this speed training you're doing every single day and ramping up for this with the best of the best? Do you have any sense, any ballpark of what you would like to run uh, there in Indianapolis next week? Um, I'd like to run sub four, four. That's my goal. Um, you know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm shooting for. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. See, you know, what I, when I end up running, you know, it's, it's, it's God's plan with all that. So everything, you know, got to gotta have a good race. But, yeah, that's, that's my goal. How big a deal, from your perspective, is that 40? Um, I mean, it's not – I mean, for me, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's, it's you know, 40 yards, you know, four seconds of my life that I, that I train. You know, I'm training tremendously for as long along with all the other events. But, you know – I mean, you can count so many great players who, who ran the 40 fast, who didn't run the 40 fast, who didn't run it at all. Like, um, I, I think it, it – I don't know if I believe in any of the translation it has to the game of football um, in a sense in that way. Mm -hmm. But it is it is fun to run, fun to see, you know, who has the speed. And, and I, I can understand why all the scouts and people, you know, use it as something to, to um, you know, validate players and stuff. So – it's exciting, but for me, um, I don't, I don't care about it. Like for my future, my football career, honestly. Hey, Ron, we know how much of a meat market the combine is, but there's also such a level of investment for each of the clubs to learn about the people, right? Mm -hmm. The makeup, the mental makeup of everyone. How do you prepare for the questions that you'll be asked, for the conversations that you'll have, questions that I'm sure a lot of them will just come out of complete left field that you have no way of preparing for. How do you how do you prepare for that? You know, for me, it's about, you know, just going into it and, and being myself and making sure, you know, I'm not um, trying to go in there and, and answer questions like, you know, like a robot or give the perfect answer or something like that, you know. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, going in there and not having anything, you know, crazy on your record. If anybody, if kids are out there listening, you know, stay, stay good, be in school, don't do any of that. That helps you out. But um, I think, you know, just being in, in that in that sense, you, you, you're you not going to get any, like, crazy questions. They might try and, you know, trick you on, on football or some sort of different thing. But just keeping your composure and being like, okay, you know, these guys are trying to challenge me. And, and uh, that's okay. That's, that's what uh, the sport does in general. So just going it, being myself and um, let, letting it rock. Rome, have you had an opportunity to be around some of your peers? I mean, this is going to be a great receiver class. 
there were a lot of dudes, obviously Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors and a, and a bunch of other guys. Have you had a chance to to rub shoulders with any of them or any of them training uh, equally down in, in SoCal with XL Sports? I haven't. They're not training down here, uh, uh, but I am with uh, Jordan Whittington, who was on Texas, who caught a, a big pass against us in the, in the Sugar Bowl, mm -hmm. um, and, and he's a baller. So I've been able to train beside him and you know pick his mind a little bit, and he's a great dude, and I think he'll – He'll run very fast and get drafted very high as well. So um, I've been w been with him, but none of the kind of the the others. That's that's the only one. Best counsel and advice you've gotten for is Aaron said next week in Indianapolis and in the weeks and months ahead with pro days and everything that's on the calendar. Um, I would say just you know enjoying the process. I hear a lot of people saying this. You know this. Uh, transition from college football to the NFL with the combine pro day, you know, all the different camps that you have to go through as a, as a rookie. Um, it, it's a lot and it takes, you know, a lot of mental toll and everything. So um, I think the best advice I've gotten is just, you know, to take a second, take deep breaths and realize, Hey, like, you know, this is, this is your dream coming true here. Let's, let's be grateful. Let's, you know, be appreciative of the, the, the time that we're in. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Rome, obviously such a wonderful career at UW and so much promise for what's next for you at the next level. What has this time been like for your family, this in-between time uh, as you all are talking, whether it be in person or over the phone or over FaceTime? Uh, there's there's so much, what if this happens? What if that happens? And they're along for this journey with you. What, what, have, what has it been like for your family right now? Did you see where you are in the mock draft? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, Rome, did you see where you are? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been awesome, honestly. You know, um, my family is very supportive of everything. You know, um, you know, um, they definitely are the type probably to look at mocks and look at different things just because, you know, it was an exciting time. So how how could you not look at those things? But um, I think they're really, you know, generally just more supportive in me. You know, my pops is, you know, handling anybody that feels like they can talk smack about me. <laughs> He's always there to do that. My mom, you know, is always there to support me and and um you know give me some uh some advice on on football here and there on on life um so they they they're there they're just excited my brothers are both excited um you know uncle aunts and uncles grandparents everybody's just you know waiting for the moment waiting to, uh for everything to go down but yeah everybody's just kind of excited I'm going to get to some uh, some nuts and bolts here in just a second but you mentioned earlier hoping to run under 4-4 what do you think, height, weight, vert? What do you think you uh, some of the other numbers, Rome, that we can expect when you get down there? Um, well, shoot, I don't want to ruin the entire surprise, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'll probably weigh in around two fifteen. That's pretty much what I'm at. Um, height um, six three. I'm mm -hmm. guessing. I'm get, go get my six three. Gonna you know have my afro out when I get my height. So they give me a couple of <laughs> Uh, no, that <laughs> um, um, I'll give you for, I think I'm going to jump somewhere from 37 to 40 per vert. That's all I can give you. Gotcha. That's, all. that's good. No, that's all I need. That's all I need. That's good. <laughs> Roma Dunze here with us. Uh, one of our favorites. I was telling Aaron off the air, Rome, when you and some of your teammates came in our building, Troy and Michael, and, and when you helped serve and volunteer with holiday magic, man, you left a mark. Everybody in the building, even the Cougs in the building, were like, golly, I wish that wouldn't have happened. I hate the Huskies, but now i got to love them because uh, these guys were so great from the inside out. So we uh, super much, uh, super appreciate that. Um, is it kind of crazy to think six weeks ago you played in a national title game and then all of a sudden you fast forward through these six weeks, Rome, and not only you, like what you're preparing for, you knew that was inevitable, but the Kalen DeBoer okay. and staff would leave to Alabama. And then Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff would say, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'll come back from Tuscaloosa to Seattle right. and let me coordinate the Seahawks. How do you put in perspective what the last six weeks have been for your former coaches and now for Grubb and crew to come back to Seattle and, and help coordinate a Seahawk offense? Oh, my goodness. I mean, for me, it's just been it's been uh, for chaos for them. I think, you know, it, it's in the same ballpark, but. You know, at the same time, but with all this chaos, like it, it's not like you know they they didn't end up in in good good positions. You know, I feel like you know the coaches off as a whole dispersed and all ended up in pretty solid positions where they where they feel comfortable. You know, who who knows if they continue to change or if that's possible? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, you know, right now, I mean, it seems like you know people are are comfortable with it, and you know the whole initial staff leaving it definitely hurt. 
Um, you know, just because I, I knew it was a great staff and I want the success for UW, of course. So to see them go hurt a little bit. But did you, you know, have any sense? Of, did you, Rome, did you, I'm sorry to catch up. Do you have any yeah. sense or feel for that? That this could be, co- I mean, college football is crazy. We all know that. Transfer portal is wide open. We all know that. Did you have any sense or feel that this could be in the makings, especially when, you know, once Nick Saban stepped down there at Alabama? You know, I did not. I didn't really didn't have any sense. I didn't think, you know, or get any inclination from any of the coaches that, you know, that that was what was going to go down. And it kind of took me out of, you know, left field or just like just like everybody else. But, you know, I will say, I mean, when you had the success that the team had, you know, back to back years, you know, um, got to the national championship game, like, you know, it, it is a little bit expected that other programs are going to be like, oh, hey, how are they doing that? Okay, let's go get this guy. Let's go get this guy in. With the transfer portal, with the coaching carousel, like, you know, that's college football. And, you know, if, if you're a fan of college football, I think you're going to have to adapt to some of that craziness um, that happens every single year. Because, I mean, it's almost every single year now where, something crazy is happening and this coach you'd never expect to leave is leaving and he is here now and this player is transferring it's like you know it's part of, it's part of the story now and part yeah. of the drama of it all so hey last couple minutes here with rome i got two final questions for you we've talked a lot about ryan grubb coming back to seattle he's been on our airwaves he jumped on with bump and stacy earlier this week on the show i'm curious from your perspective when a seahawk fan that you bump into says hey rome rome talk to me about grubb what, what are we getting with Ryan Grubb? What are we getting with Scott Huff? Give me something from the inside as you worked with him every day for the last couple of years. And as you said, got all the way to the pinnacle, to the mountaintop there with the national title game. What are the Seahawks getting in Ryan Grubb? Man, I would say y'all are getting uh, a dog. <laughs> and I know a lot of people, you know, describe a player as that, and, you know, with the mindset mentality. But to me, that's exactly what Grubb is, man. Um, you know, Grubb's the type of guy, he, he he's out preparing, you know, everybody, um, you know, to, to the fullest. You know, out preparing everybody, each and everybody, each and everyone, each week, you know, his opponents, making sure that he's leaving no detail behind. So I think they're going to get someone that they can be, you know, super proud of. I really think that they're going to go over there and, and have a lot of success, especially with the tremendous receivers and, and quarterback as well that they have over there. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, a pass, a pass friendly, you know, explosive, explosive game plan. I'm sure we'll be going in week to week and a guy who, who is not going to let y'all down, you know, and, and he's going to work it, work his ass off to, to go make it happen. Mm. Hey, Rome, I gotta, I gotta tell you just two quick things from a personal standpoint. One, my oldest son is nine years old and he had never really gotten hooked on football until right. your Husky team this year, man. Mm. Like, your Husky team and what they did got him hooked on football. So, like, powerful stuff. Like, I know that might just seem like, oh, just some nine-year-old kid, but, like, that's how these things happen, and you were a big part of that. So I thank you for that. His no, be- absolutely. His, uh, his, no, his best friend, I got to give a shout-out to my man Gavin Marshall mm. at Mark Twain Elementary. Mm. Gavin is such a UW fan, okay, that... We all call him Odunze. I coach him in third grade basketball room. And every, every time Gavin Marshall gets a bucket, you know what our whole bench does? We all go, Odunze! And everybody in that gym is like, what? What? What is this freckled redhead little white kid getting everybody yelling Odunze about? But th- as you go on, Rome, to bigger and better things and an incredible NFL career, man, you just need to know, like, you left an incredible stamp on so many people here in Seattle, and I can speak on behalf of two of them. So very well done, man. Awesome stuff. Yeah, well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, that was, you know, a part of, you know, apart from, you know, going and, and getting the national championship, that was, you know, the, the second biggest goal there, just going, you know, inspiring people. You know, everybody you know, used to tell me how, you know, when UW winning, when UW stopping, the, the, the city feels a little different and, and the vibe is a, is a little higher. So that's exactly what it's about, man. You know, inspiring these young kids and, you know, hopefully to, you know, be a role model for all of them. And, you know, so hopefully they can have some fun with it along with all of us. So I appreciate you sharing that, man. It, mean, it means a lot to me.
Absolutely. Well, you go get warmed up. I know you got speak here in about 14 minutes or so. I don't want to take any more time. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but how important will it be, last question, that you land somewhere in the NFL where you got a fishing port nearby so you can get out there with Captain Tom and you can get on the water and you can do your fishing thing. Have you told your agent, like, hey, hey, listen, I, I'm not going to such and such. I ain't going to Kansas City. I need to be on the water somewhere. Yeah, no, I mean, we were already on it. I mean, that was the first thing I <laughs> told them. And, um, you know, when I go into these combine meetings, I'm going to the record straight like, hey, yes. you know, sorry, sorry, Kansas City. Is, you know, just, uh, the ocean's too far, man. The yep. ocean's too far. Sorry, Arizona. Yep, landlocked. Uh uh-uh, uh, not going to work. Rome, you're the best, man. Uh, absolutely kick butt. We will be rooting for you, cheering for you, screaming Odunze at your 40 next week. Uh, go and get it done, and uh, we'll look forward to watching you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me.